So aside from Modo and Substance Painter and Photoshop, there are uh, several other applications that I use on pretty much a daily basis to get, uh, get through my workday and make my life easier. So uh, I'm going to run through a quick list here. Hopefully you, you know, will find something in here useful, maybe you hadn't heard of before or hadn't considered using for this purpose. And uh, yeah, let's take a look. So the first application uh, to talk about is the one that's the least flashy, but is is, is arguably the most useful. Now I've I, I've talked about Dropbox before, and before you even jump up and start objecting, you, know, you can insert Drive or OneDrive or SkyDrive or whatever service you want to talk about, you know, as long as it does the basic functionality that Dropbox does. You know, it doesn't really matter what you use. The whole point of my recommending Dropbox is that you're having an alternative version of your data. Well, not an alternative, a, you know, a duplicate copy of your data stored in the cloud. And if you have multiple computers, it's automatically propagated to those computers. Uh, Dropbox has the added functionality that I'm not sure the others do. They probably do. You know, at least some of them must, where you where it keeps the 30-day history of the file. So if you corrupt the file, so if you're working on the file and decide that you really actually liked what you were doing like three days ago, you can go, uh, you can hop onto the Dropbox site and go back on the timeline and grab that version of the file and restore it. Super useful. And you know, I, I will admit that on one occasion, I completely deleted a client's entire folder. <laughs> But I was able to recover it really simply with a couple of clicks in Dropbox, you know, wait a few minutes for it to sync up, and everything was back the way it was supposed to be. No harm, no foul. And that's really what I mostly use it for. It's not because I, I necessarily need to use multiple computers or that sort of functionality, but I use it for disaster recovery, for, well, short-term disaster recovery. It's not a replacement for having a full backup that you keep off-site and all that, but it is right in that fantastic middle ground of short-term backup. It's off-site because it's off in the cloud and super easy recovery, you know, a little bit of revision history. And when I'm working, I'm working straight in my Dropbox folder. You know, I don't have fold I have a work folder on a separate drive that I sync up every night and then it uploads like I am saving and uploading and archiving in real time all day long and you know, I just find that works really well for me so look into it try it out if you're not already trying it out and see which service works for you because it's having that safety net is super nice so an art application that I use all the time when uh, critiquing people's work or trying to give instructions to people is called Leonardo. Now Leonardo is essentially it's like a Photoshop light I guess but it's really more for drawing so you, just, you fire up you know, Leonardo and it has an infinite canvas so you can you just fire it up you have a default document st st start drawing right away it doesn't have any notion of setting a dimensions or anything like that you have this infinite canvas to draw on and you just start going for it. Uh, it does have a layering system, uh, which is handy because you can overlay your notes and you can give things an alpha value and transparency and different blending modes and that kind of stuff. But it's nowhere near as hardcore as Photoshop. But to be honest, that's okay because the speed that Leonardo works at more than makes up for that. It, loads up in about a second for me, which is a far cry faster than Photoshop and uses a ton less RAM. And what I find it most handy for is just to fire it up. You know, let's say that I do like a, uh, you know, a copy of screen region to the clipboard. I fire up Leonardo. Uh, I paste in that screen region, you know, make a new layer, you know, that I can, um, start drawing right on top of that image really quickly. You're just calling out stuff I don't like or whatever needs to go on. You know, then you can, you know, like I said, you can tune that layer with transparency, do whatever you need to do. Then just grab that screen region again and fire it back in an email. It's super fast for crits. It's super fast for just small jobs. And you know, that infinite canvas really comes in handy when dealing with reference photos. 
So by way of example, here's a reference file I put together for some Gears of War weapons recently. And I just kept taking screen grabs, pasting them in, dragging them into position. And uh, yeah, just made this big scrollable wall of guns that I could zoom around and get into quickly and look at details and pan around. And you know, um, again, this is not that it's not something you can't do in Photoshop, but I find it so much lighter weight here and faster to get things done that I just find myself coming here more and more and going to Photoshop less and less. Now there's limitations with Leonardo. You know, like I say, it's lightweight, so it doesn't do um, uh, channel handling, for example. You can't, you know, I'll pull an image up and edit the alpha channel. You can't, there's no, uh, it has layers, but there's no way to like, do that cool Photoshop thing where you control click a, you know, I'm part of an image and you select that layer automatically. Like there's little niceties like that missing, but for quick uh, image collections, manipulations, crits, whatever, it's fantastic. So yeah, uh, give it a shot. So when it comes to editing text files, which is something I do all the time, um, I find there's no, there's no better place to go than sublime text editor. It's, you know, it's got all my usual qualifications. It loads quickly, it's fast, it's responsive, and you can, you know, it's got just the right mix of features that I find it pretty much invaluable. You know, I can work on assembler code, I can you know, edit my, uh, my Moto input files. It's got this cool scrollable gutter thing over here. You, just, uh, you click over here and drag, you can quickly move through the file. Now, kind of like the navigator in Photoshop, except for a text file. Uh, with a key press, I can split the window and put and put files on this side if I want to. They have their own independent scrollers, and you know when I'm dealing with a bunch of complex tech stuff and heavy editing, it's really wonderful for a lot of things. I don't want to get into a whole sublime, uh, you know, kind of tutorial here, but it's got some neat stuff. Like if I highlight this word Petsky, and I want to to change that on several lines, I, I can keep highlighting the word pet ski and then type in something new if I want to. And you know, with multiple cursors, you know, I can replace it all. And I can, uh, yeah, anyway, not gonna get into a full feature list, but it has project files. It's, uh, it's wonderful for code editing. You can set up a custom build system so it fires out to whatever compiler you want it to fire out to. You can, search and replace, you can easily find things. It's just a wonderful little file, or a wonderful little text editor, and I highly recommend it. So, Clover. Clover is a, a tiny little application that adds a little bit of functionality to the Windows Explorer that makes working with it so much easier. So once you've installed Clover, you'll be able to hit Control N to open up a new file explorer window, which will be separate from the one you're running or control T, which will open up a separate tab uh, within the same Explorer window. This is, yeah, I, I actually can't express how useful that is. I, I do that all the time. It's almost by reflex now. And I find that if I have to reinstall a computer or use someone else's machine and I don't have that functionality, I, I feel that I miss it constantly. So yeah, look into Clover. Clover can really add a lot to your life. Now TerraCopy, once again, this is another application that adds a little functionality to Windows, and it's hard to show, but uh, basically it replaces the copy and move functions with its own window. Uh, this window can open up a, uh, a detailed view that shows you exactly what's going on with the file copy. Uh, it offers uh, very easy to understand prompts when things go wrong, and it's just a super handy way to copy and move files around. That's about all I have to say, but it integrates so seamlessly with Explorer. You, you know, uh, when you right click, drag a folder to another folder and let go, you get that menu pops up, copy, move, blah, blah, blah. Uh, TerraCopy just uh, replaces that with its own commands and it's super simple. So give it a look and, and see if you find it useful. So the link shell extension. I saved this one for last because you know, it, you know, it's a little technical, but the power that it gives you is actually pretty impressive. So what this 
yeah, like it says, you, uh, uh, it's an extension to the Windows shell. So you know, it integrates right into the right click menu. And what it's doing is it uh, allows for easy creation of a symbolic link. Uh, it does other things, but what I use it for is symbolic linking. Now, what is symbolic linking? And I'm sorry, this is where it gets a little techy, but what you can do, you, and in that shell, is right click a folder, you know, and tell it that's going to be your source. Right click somewhere else on your hard drive and say you want to drop a symbolic link there. Now, what that does is these two folder point, these two folders on your hard drive are the same folder. So that means that if you access this folder, it's exactly the same as if you're sitting in this folder. Now to put that into more, more concrete terms that are easy to understand, let's say you've got a bunch of ZBrush brushes uh, over here and you don't want to copy them over to your ZBrush folder because you like having everything in one place. Hey, why don't you make a symbolic link, right? You can uh, right click that ZBrush brush folder, navigate to ZBrush, uh, uh, burrow in the 14 subdirectories necessary to get to the startup brushes and drop a symbolic link there. Then when you fire a ZBrush, you'll have access to these brushes from here and it will feel completely natural uh, as if you had copied them over there. Uh, and this is useful for a ton of stuff. Like let's say you have a folder that you want to include in your Dropbox, you know, but you don't want to actually have to work in Dropbox for whatever reason. You, know, you everyone's got their you know, their tech setups. Just make a symbolic link from this folder to to inside of your Dropbox folder. Uh, Dropbox will see that uh, like it's a real folder that's sitting within itself and back it up with everything else. Uh, the reason this works is that, is that symbolic links are working at the file system level. They're a Windows feature. They're not something that's being tacked on. So you can be pretty, well, I'd, <laughs> the programmer side of me never wants to say it's absolutely going to work, but you're pretty damn assured it's going to keep on working since this is an operating system feature. So download it. You know, maybe give it a play with some folders you know, where it doesn't really matter, you know, some harmless stuff. You just see if you like what it gives you because you'll be able to try it out in less time that I've been sitting here babbling about it. Try it out. See if you like it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.